Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 18 and following. Jeremiah 8, 18. Open your Bible, Jeremiah 8.18. And oh man, I look around me today and this is the way I feel a lot of times. So do you. I know you do because I hear you talk about it when you have watched the news and you say this very thing. My joy is gone. My grief is upon me. My heart is sick. Within. Behold the cry of the daughter of my people. That would be the Israelites. Jewish people. Jeremiah's day. About 700 years before Christ. He says, my joy is gone, the grief is upon me. A heart is sick within me. Behold the cry of the daughter of my people from the length and breadth of the land. Is the Lord not in Zion? Is her king not in her? And the Lord answers, Why have they provoked me to anger with their carved images and with their foreign idols? And the people again say, the harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. For the wound of the daughter of my people is my heart wounded. I mourn and dismay has taken hold on me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then has that help? of the daughter of my people not been restored. It's an old Negro spiritual. We don't know who wrote it. And a lot of little stanzas have been added onto it through the years. Not my brother or my sister but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not the preacher or the deacon, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my father, nor my mother, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not the stranger or my neighbor, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Whoever put that together, perhaps hundreds of years ago, wasn't saying that the deacon, the preacher, mom and dad, brother and sister, stranger, neighbor doesn't need prayers. But it's saying above all, it's me. The prayer of the publican in Luke chapter 18, smoking upon his breast, saying, be merciful, O God, be merciful. And so when we look around about us in the country, when we look around about us in society, we want to blame everything. We want to play the blame game. Society's fault. It's the school system's fault. It's the parents' fault. It's the church's fault. It's the politicians. It's the government's fault. It's always someone else's fault. what the people of Israel needed to come to in their thinking as Jeremiah saw it they needed to say it's me me, me O oh Lord the harvest is past, the summer is ended it's all gone and this judgment is upon 
upon us. God is raising up a pagan nation, the Babylonians, and they're going to come and they're going to invade the land because we deserve that, is what Jeremiah is saying. And that's why his heart is so sick. That's why he is so down. This weeping prophet who loved his people and planned with his people. For almost 40 years he ministered to his people. And they would not listen. They come to realize that it's too late to avoid judgment. Can you go so far in sinful way? that you cannot avoid the punishment, avoid the chastisement, and avoid the judgment of God. What a situation to be in. And that, we often think, is what our country is now, and it's what we as individuals are right now. And so sorry. And the wonderful thing about Jeremiah, He'd been trying for 40 years to reach them and he couldn't reach them. But he never condemned them. He loved them and it broke his heart. See, when we see sin round about us, sometimes we want to shame, shame, shame. We want to put them down. We want to castigate them. We want to really come down hard on them. But this Jeremiah, who saw the sin of the people, realized that they deserved the punishment that was coming upon them. He didn't say, oh, Does it ever break your heart when you see, experience, hear, feel the sin that is ravaging the land? And sometimes God allows your heart to be broken in order for the healing to come. I knew a boy one time who broke his arm. And he didn't go right away for help. And after a long time, that broken arm actually kind of healed. But it was crooked. It was different. It wasn't the same. And we went to the hospital. They had to re-break the bone in order for it to mend properly. Sometimes God breaks us to mend us. Sometimes he allows the judgment to come upon us. He allows terrible things to happen to ourselves or to our nation in order to heal us. And it fills us with such sorrow. Jeremiah did not have condemnation. He had compassion. Just as Jesus comes before Jerusalem and sits on a mountain, looks over Jerusalem, and he begins to weep. And he says, how often I would have gathered you together, but you would have none of it. And he weeps over Jerusalem. There has to be a solution. And Jeremiah is looking at the people who are asking, is there hope anywhere? Now, Gilead is in a land that we would today call Jordan. Jerusalem, you just go east, you come to the Jordan River, you cross the Jordan River, and you are in a country called Jordan. That was Gilead in Jeremiah's day. And Gilead had a bush or a small tree that exhibited in its bark and its roots and its leaves a resin. And that resin could be squeezed out and made into a gum that was a balm. It was a healing agent. You get burned and you put on, on one tea or you put Vicks or you put aspirin cream or you 
put some kind of a balm, a soothing ointment that takes, takes away the pain. And the people are saying, is there no balm? Well, of course there's balm over there. It was profusely populated with these bushes that had the balm that would bring about healing. And wherever those healing medicants would be, would also be the doctors. They congregated over there. And so they say, is there no doctors there? Is there no physicians there? Is there no medicines there? And Jeremiah's answer is, yes, yes, yes. There is healing there. There is a physician there. There is help there. The problem is you don't use it. You don't call on the doctor. Sometimes you have to call on a doctor. Mike, can I tell you a story? Can I tell you a story? In that hospital bed, I'm going to tell it. I don't remember what the operation was, but he was in a hospital. Oh, loses. No. Yeah, yeah, that's the story, not the other story. I won't tell you. <laughs> he's in that hospital bed, and he's hurt. I don't know what now. Uh, operation was, and maybe we can't even talk about it, I don't know, but he's hurting, he's in pain, he's suffering, he's laying there, it is not, and it's one o'clock, two o'clock, he presses the little button, please mercy, come help me, please call the doctor. No answer. They ignored this dear man, didn't do a thing for him, and he's hurting, he's in pain. But he's also smart. <laughs> By his hospital bed is a cell phone. He picks up the cell phone. This is unbelievable. It's in a hospital bed. 911. He calls 911 and he says, Please send the doctor. I'm in pain. I'm hurting. No one will help me. Where are you? Uppers. And it was about 20 minutes later, was it not, when the doctor come running in? And did he ever chew out some nurses, right? The next day, it was quite a few But he was not happy with that. No, quite a few different nurses came in. Oh, they came in right then. He got help. And sometimes when you're hurting, sometimes when your nation is hurting, sometimes when your church is hurting, you want to say, is there no help anywhere, no doctors anywhere, no appointments anywhere? And it's there all along. And here's the wonderful thing about this doctor. This physician that you can call on, he's always on call. You can get him any time. And that great physician is none other than Christ Jesus our Lord. That medicine that he has, that balm that he has, that soothing, that comfort, that healing that he has is in his bag and he is right there with you. You can get him any time. And it's free. Can I tell out much forms? Then find out, well, we don't take people with that insurance. No, this, this Lord Jesus will come to you any time, any place, because the insurance policy that you have with him is written with his blood, his sinless blood, that washes away all of your sins. It is there, and his cure is effective, 100% effective. When he comes into your life, he takes over your life, and there is that balm, there is that medicine, there is that physician, He's right there. Yes, Jeremiah says to his people, he says to his people, the answer is yes, there's one in Gilead across the river. Yes, there's a physician there. And all you need to do is call on him. All you need to do is trust in him. All you need to do is open yourself to the healing and the help that he will offer to you. It is 100% effective. 
If we confess our sins, John 1, 9, He is faithful to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all, and that's the key word, all unrighteousness. If we just come to Him. It's not of us, Lord, it's me. Are you in that need? Oh, dear God, I am so sick and tired. I am just so overwhelmed with what goes on or all around me. And more than that, I am sick of what goes on inside of me. And I come to you. And I know the medicine is there. I know the physician. Just call on him. He will come to me. But I must call. He hung on a cross right beside Jesus. And he died a thief. The thief had nails in his hands. I believe that Jesus and both these were nailed. Just tied on a cross like you see in some pictures. No? They were all crucified. There were nails in his hands so he couldn't do any work. There were nails in his feet so he couldn't run any errands for the Lord. He could not lift a hand or a foot toward salvation. Yet Christ offered to him to be in paradise with him that same day. There's nothing you can do, no church you can join, no good works you can perform, wonderful deeds that you can bring about that will give you salvation. The only thing you can do is take it. Take the medicine. Invite the physician. 